All right. Hey, everyone. It is James Gardner here with the Heroes on Vitality. Another episode coming at you where we, uh, I have the privilege and honor to sit down with some amazing souls, some amazing inspirational people sharing their stories, their journeys, their life lessons, uh, each a, a hero in their own right to their friends, their family, and their community. Today's episode, I'm, I'm joined by a, a fearless young woman and, uh, and a, uh, an amazing soul, a dental hygienist, entrepreneur, health and wellness advocate, and as we're going to see, also a, a champion for anti-bullying. And it's my, my pleasure to sit down and discuss with... Jessica Drader. Hey, Jess. Hi. Thanks for having me, James. Really good to be here with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. joining us. Yeah, this is great. This is exciting. Um, lots, yeah. lots to share. So I can't wait to, to awesome to get going with you with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we I I had to interest you intro you as a fearless woman, which you yeah. are. Let's <laughs> really get into some of your story. I, I myself think it's fearless to look into people's mouths for a living and deal yeah. <laughs> and deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. You are a dental hygienist. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you know what? I, I love it. I love <laughs> it. You know what? I don't think there is a thing in this world that grosses me out. So it's kind of the perfect job for me. Not a thing. And yes. Not a thing. Not. Come on. I don't know. I haven't come. Are you, one, are you one of those nuts on fear factor that would just eat whatever they put in front of you? I might. Oh God. I might, you know, even oysters kind of gross me out though. I don't know if you're an oyster fan, but the, no, I know. Right. They're a little, okay. but okay. even that, you know, I'm like, I I'll do it. I'll eat it. I like right. it. Fearless uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, we digress, she, but hit it. <laughs> she eats oysters. So she's so fearless. Well, true. <laughs> true. <laughs> um, no, but, um, no, if it, you know, if we're talking money here, they're throwing money at me. Yeah. I'll eat them. I'll eat whatever you oh, yeah. Yeah whatever you throw at me, right? I'll, I'll do that. Um, my next fearless thing though, that I'm really wanting to do is skydive. I've had my eye on skydiving. I am, I'm just, I need to do that. I'm so excited for that. So that's next summer's bucket list. Um, you're going to take Ariel on that, uh, journey. I would love to go with her. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should do a tan or however tandem. I think that would be really fun. Cause we're both very, um, cohesive on the same page about being fearless, yeah. you know, so we just go back and forth on that. So we would just, we would just have a great time together. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, yeah. I, we could talk, we should have another fearless segment. Oh yeah. Fearless, according to Jessica and James. Yeah. <laughs> um, dent, how like dental hygienist. Yeah. Where, where did that calling come from? If I may, mm. I actually started as a dental assistant um back in 2011 um so i've been in the health the dental field for i guess since 2011 what are we looking at 11 years 11 mm -hmm. years now and um i yeah i i kind of i wasn't sure but it was a short what it was is i was coming out of waitressing and i wasn't sure what i wanted to do with my life and i actually started a degree program to be a teacher wasn't really feeling that but i i just wanted and I love working with my hands. I couldn't just be at a desk mm. staring at a screen all day. That wasn't me. So I needed something a little bit more hands-on with um, with people. And my mom had actually suggested, it's a short course. It's pretty cheap. Why don't you get into it and um, see if you like it kind of thing. And I ended up falling in love with dentistry. Um, why? I, again, it was just, it just suited yeah. me. I just, yeah. I just fit that scene. I love talking and working with people and helping people too. And everyone would come in with this situation and I was able to, to help them. Um, what happened with hygiene is hygiene is a very independent role and you work separate from the dentist. You take on your own patients. You have your own, you know, walk of, through your day with them. Mm. Um, and I felt like I'm a more independent person to be able to see people on my own. Um, I loved the doctors who I worked for, but at the end of the day, I was their assistant. So I had to do in a way what I was told with them. Sure. And so hygiene was really hard though, as an adult to go, you know, you're at this point and then to go back and redo school, restart your education, kind of restart a chapter in your life. It's very hard. 
because I had a very secure job as being an assistant and I had to do a lot of schooling, mm. a lot of money to get myself um, to where I am. But it was a, it was something that I knew I had to do and um, no regrets, never will look back. I absolutely love dental hygiene. Mm. Um, my days, my days are fun and they go by fast. I see, you know, a patient, I have my time with them. I, I do my job with them and it's, yeah. um, you know, I, I think too, it, it's maybe somewhat unheralded. I mean, you, you do foster a relationship with a lot of patients. At the end of the day, people come in and see you mm-hmm. more than they actually see the dentist. Absolutely. You know, and but once we have their mouth stable, they're not doing restorative care of seeing the dentist. Mm-hmm. So a lot of patients, they, the dentist comes in for the exam for, you know, a few minutes and um, does their checkup and then the rest of the times with me. So a lot of throughout the years, um, I become friends actually with a lot of my patients. You know, they come in and I, we know each other we, we it's e- it makes it so much easier. It's just almost like having a coffee with a friend. It's like, it's like <laughs> okay, we're not drinking coffee, but <laughs> or sometimes they're like, Jessica, do you have a bottle of wine hidden somewhere? No, right? Can we, can we just not do a teeth clean? Can we just drink and chat? <laughs> Because I well, love you know, stories. But it's it's know. interesting because just the the mis well not misconception but it, it it it's it's a common denominator out there. Most people don't like going. To yeah, the it's true. It they is just true. Don't they go to the doctor when they're sick? Yeah, but it's something I don't <clears throat> know what it is. It's something. It is. But something. it's definitely right. It's something. Yeah that uh, Mm -hmm. gets in the way of people having a pleasant experience in in that realm. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It is day to day I see people that say, I don't like being here. So if I can make their time there more more special and more, and almost fun, like that if they leave having a smile on their face, I did my job. Not like, oh, they're smiling because they had their teeth clean. More like, that was a fun conversation or, oh, I really learned something. Um, when I when somebody comes into the appointment and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a bad day, I'm not feeling it. I'm like, all right, game on, let's change this. How can we change this? Mm-hmm. And more so than not, I will. Because, you know, I don't just see them as a mouth, I see them as a whole person. Right. Um, so it's like, you know, and, and sometimes they were, you know, kind of like hairdressers or nail salon were like the undercover therapist. So they can tell us their darkest secrets. Where is it going to go? And we can give them, we can have that really deep conversation. So mm-hmm. it's, it's more, it's for me, I don't know, I can't speak on every hygienist, but for me, it's more than just a teeth cleaning. And then they leave feeling like, okay, I can come back feeling comfortable and confident that True. with my next appointment. You know, well, you're so, creating a safe space. I mean, yes. let's be honest, laying in a chair with your mouth open is is a pretty vulnerable place. And, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, there's a, there's a lot of noise and yeah. things associated with the process of, of being in that chair. And, yeah. and so, you know, you're, you're creating a safe space and you're showcasing really, which is the, which is a fundamental component of every successful business, which is, it's a relationship. At the end of the day, the currency is relationship and life. Yeah. Life, you know, it's not transactional based. So. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. So, cause, um, I almost wish it was a tipping service, high dental hygiene, like, (laughs) like, like, you know, you know, waitress will serve your food good. It's good. And it's like, Hey, why isn't other occupations, Hey, you are an entrepreneur, you know, maybe we need to, Hey, uh, strategist, you and I will talk after this. I like that thought process. We're like, you know, doctors do a good job for a heart surgery. They save your life. Do they get tipped? No, no. <laughs> they don't get it. Here, you save but, my life. But your, your Uber takes you from downtown across the West yeah. side and yeah. they get a tip. They get a tip. Yep. Right. Yeah, anyways, yeah, that's a that's a, we'll work on that. We'll, we'll work, work on that. that. Stay we'll tuned, everyone. That. Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jessica, um, <clears throat> I also labeled you as fearless. We were joking, but it is something that's that's um, very powerful in your life. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned you had um, it was scary to leave being a dental assistant 
mm-hmm. and switch gears to to mm-hmm. your hygienist career. And obviously, something like that takes a lot of courage. Mm-hmm. It does. Yeah. Where, like, what do you attribute that to? Where, where does that courage in in Jessica, the the fearless <laughs> oyster shucking <laughs> down the hatch lady? <laughs> but but seriously you know where where does that courage come from um james as we had a little our little pre-talk i i did have a little rough patch in my teenager years so um when i was growing up i went i was at times a victim of bullying Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of teenagers go through that Um, I'm fortunate enough that social media was not a part of my high school years. Thank goodness. I can't even imagine now having social media be a part of it. Oh my goodness. But, um, what that led to is a more in-person passive aggressive bowling, not internet based bowling. Um, and you know, and then there's uh, teenager years, uh, for me, it was really hard. You know, you, you're, you have a lot of expectations. So you need to be doing well in school. Then you need you need to make money. So you have to have an after school job. You know whatever that is, McDonald's, what, however. Mine was A and W. And and then you're okay. Now you need to kind of fit in and, and find yourself though as well. Okay, wait. Now you got your soccer practice, and now you have and your extracurriculars. You have so much going on, and through all that you're you're a teenager you're you're finding that maturity and finding yourself as a person also trying to fit in and then sexually trying to find yourself with um you know boyfriends girlfriends friendships family um it's it's a lot of pressure i think in teenager years and with that comes what we see in a lot of teenagers that rebelling that you know, outbursts and, and things that they do. And we, we did. Right. Um, mm-hmm. and I, I found for me, you know, I, I, I did those outbursts. I, I didn't, I didn't do well. And one of them led to depression, uh, teenage depression, which was uh, really hard on my family. Um, but I just, you know, when you go through times of, okay, I'm not fitting in and the boy doesn't like me or whatever. Um, what's the point of living? And at that time, I find a lot of teenagers, we don't see past high school. We don't see the future. Right. You're in that moment and that is it. This is life. There is nothing more than this. This is what life will always be. And you know, you have your adults and other people telling you there's so much more after and you're like, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, you don't, you know, you, you, you hear it and you, you know, they're wise, but you really don't. You really just, think this is all I care about right now. My friends now, the boys now, what is my life now? You live in that moment. And so in that moment, not having those things, well, there's no point in living. And I think a lot of teenagers unfortunately go, go through that and they can't see the bigger picture past what they're going through in that moment. So you're, you're, let's, let's stick on depression for a moment because I think that's a, it's a very weighty word and, and it's something that's prevalent in this day and age, regardless of age. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for you and your journey, was it did, like, cause you talked about boys, for example, I don't, I don't know, but I mean, did you, you mentioned expectation, let me back up. Sorry. You mentioned expectation and uh, <clears throat> I went through this too. I went through this at 23 okay that was my doorway into adulthood when I went to, when I lived to New York city. So I moved to New York city and all of a sudden here I am. And all of a sudden I had the real world around me, expectations, do this, do that, buy this, marry by this, save money by this. And so Mm -hmm. for me, my self worth started Mm -hmm. to then be associated with everything outside of me. Mm -hmm. Um, Does she like me? Did I get the girl? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Is that something similar that you feel? I don't know. You can speak of your journey. Um, What what was your, was it self-worth that you were associating with? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Again, this was, this was, um, what was I? I was 16, 17. So I just, 
I, I just didn't have even the maturity to recognize different situations I was going through and really mm. being like, okay, this doesn't matter. This should matter. These people don't matter. I, it was all, it all mattered and everything just hit and hit and hit and hit to the point where it just, it just kind of, kind of crumbled me. So my self-worth just went down. I didn't have any. And that's where depression hits in. Um, and depression, there, there is different ranges of it, I feel, to where, you know, you, you get up in the morning, you can do your day and you can be kind of oh, yeah. functioning depressed or it's like to the point at my age and my maturity where it took me to, I wanted to end it, you know, and I, I, and I tried on many, a few occasions. Um, with saying that, it didn't take till later on to realize, did I really truly want to end it? Or was I just, or was it just a cry for help? And I think for a lot of teenagers, it's just a cry for help. They don't want to, they don't, they don't want to end it. They want to be here. Um, they just need to be noticed. They just want somebody to listen and, and really listen to what they're going through. Not just get in trouble for everything you do or not doing. And um, so I re it was a bit of a cry for help, more of a dramatic technique to, um, seek attention um but in the time i didn't see it as that at the time sure. i was like no i just i just don't want to be here but looking back i think it was more that and i'm curious with a lot of other teenagers is that more what it is and i think people just need to look at a teenager going through that and being like okay i need to just listen to them hear their story hear them out more than just try and fix them fix it okay mm -hmm. they're depressed okay put you on medication put you in in this um, hospital. Um, and that, that happened to me. I was put on medication and I was put into a hospital and when you're put on, and, and, and this is just my journey. This is just how I take it. Okay, James. Um, when I was put on medication and at that age, I was, it made it real. It made, okay, wait, am I truly depressed? If I am like, okay, then it just, it, it brought it to life. And you know, the seed in me that, okay, I'm sad about things. Now I'm on medication. Now I'm seeing doctors for it. Okay. Now, now, now this is, this is real. Right. I, I'm a depressed person. Okay. And the drugs actually did the opposite to me. I, I personally am not a believer in um, prescription drugs for that because my personal experience had the opposite effect. It did not make me antidepressed. It enhanced it because it brought it, it made it so real. My brain was like, I'm taking this pill to make me not depressed. How depressed must I be to take a pill? Right. Okay. So it, it actually enhanced suicidal thoughts and really took it to a, a, a dangerous level um, where I was admitted to, to a psych ward. Um, mm -hmm. And James, and going back to all your stuff on why am I fearless and why have I come to be was that moment, actually. So that moment for you, I, mm -hmm. I, I call it... A jungle event in, in my terminology in terms of life. And I think we have a series of these events that change us, mm -hmm. uh, some more profound than others. Mm -hmm. For you, you were 16, 17 at this point, yeah. give or take, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, and so out of that, I mean, that in and of itself, you know, here's a, here's a, here, Here's a young woman who um, was dying to be heard and understood mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a cry for help. What? And then, you know, the, the, the fearless shield maiden and warrior came from that, out of that, uh, that event. What was some of the first steps that you took on this, this new path of Jessica when you woke up mm -hmm. in the hospital mm -hmm. and said, you know, what after you this, mm -hmm. pull the ripcord, I'm out. It How was that. I it was just like that. Um, there was a situation in the hospital while I was there with um, a true patient that was truly, you know, needed to be in the psych ward. And it was called a code white. And in the psych ward, it's, you know, you have little walls and then a curtain. And when they, it was all dark. And then when they flick on the light though, you just see shadows, kind of shadows moving around across your curtain. That was, and on my bed, my little cot had like straps like to, to restrain me if necessary. 
And I'm looking at all this all around me and I'm like, Jessica, what the F are you doing here? Oh my gosh, girl, you don't belong here. And uh, the cold white situation, it was a man who was screaming at the doctors and this whole, oh my goodness, was in front of my curtain. I'm witnessing this and I'm like, this isn't me. That's not me. I'm okay. And I was like, I've taken this too far. I am, I, I, I don't want this for my life. I don't want to be in this place. And um, it was a, it was a wake up call beyond anything. And I had an epiphany and it was like, get your shit together. <laughs> and, um, and I, and, and I was probably about 17 when that happened. And um, I think a lot of teenagers might not have that moment. And like I said, it took me to that point that right. far to have that. Oh my God. And so I, got out of there and right away my we, I seeked help what do I need to do to get out of here uh the situation and um I did uh six months of counseling and I give a lot to him he was amazing my counselor and he he listened he I could be honest I could tell him I wasn't in trouble for everything I told him or you know I wasn't getting grounded or 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 just you know a, a stupid team acting out it was no he just listened to me and and everything I said um help helped every situation or had a had advice or you know it was just it was, it was so good so mm. um and then i got into a really good group of friends a piece of a good support system around me had you know the summer of my life with them and um and from there it just snowballed into a more positive a, a better better life for myself and i always would look back and be like i just kept growing and growing and growing and and be like that's where it started from and I will never be that person again. I'll never mm -hmm. allow that to happen to myself. And I am a fighter against bullies and for people bringing others down. And yeah. um, Captain America is my favorite Marvel character because of that. Stand up for the little guy. That's right. <laughs> right? I love it. Uh, when, okay. I mean, when when did when did Jessica don the the, the superhero tights and cape, if you will? So in other words, right, when we, when we, when we emerge from these events and we go through our personal growth, we know we've, we've been there. It's, it, it's a never ending growth. We know that it's, it, the journey doesn't end. However, there is a gray area that we, we kind of get our wings, but then there's a point where we start to really emerge and step into who we are today. Yeah. Like the James here, the yeah. Jessica for you. When did that happen for you? Like, when did the fearless mm. Jessica really? I don't, know. I don't know if for the fear. I think I always been since I was a kid. I think I was okay. born with it, to be honest. I've always been in all activities, all sports. I would always be the one to let's do it. Let's go. You know, I would never hold back. I think that comes a lot. My mom's pretty fearless. Mm. Um, she's pretty inspirational. She'll do anything in any, she'll eat anything, do anything, you know, go anywhere and just yeah she's so I think a lot of that came from family um friends and um, my my husband today he's very inspiring he's pretty fearless too so I'm surrounded by the an aerial and I'm surrounded by these people that um that have that so we it's it's a very positive feed off each other that mm. uh and I have this thing and I it's that if someone tells me I can't do something and this probably stems back from those teenager years I have to prove them wrong so if anyone he says, oh, okay, you're not good enough, or you can't do that, or no way, it's like, oh, okay, yes way, watch me. <laughs> but hold my beer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hold my, just wait. Hold my beer. I'll um, be right back. <laughs> I'll be right back. Let me let me just show you. Um, I think life's a lot more fun having been on the edge a little bit. It makes yeah. that 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 feel of adrenaline and just um, saying yes, like you know the movie Yes Man, saying yes such a positive like it's such a it speaks so loud that movie on mm. you know uh with jim carrey there just saying yes to everything and how it changed his life so That's being right. that person that just can always always be a part always say yes um you will grow so much your network will grow your people will grow and you never know day to day who you might meet and how they might change your life so always say yes and always be a part of uh, things um it's hard speaking that way to a lot of introverts. That's just not, that's really out of their normal. So this more goes to our extroverts out there. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's also amazing to see your journey in terms of you've, you've put together a lot of micro yes moments mm -hmm. uh, ever, yeah, since exactly. that, ever since that jungle event. Yeah. And, and 
you know, it's, it's like stepping stones. It's led you on your, on your path in life. Uh, one that's, uh, a lot more fulfilled than you envisioned yeah. X number of years ago. And James, you don't know how glad I am every single day that one of my attempts never <laughs> went through, you sure. know, I, I am so happy and I, and I, and I owe that to, um, surrounding myself with really positive people well, and yes, it. people. And, um, Our um yes, I love that. Um, so yeah. Jess, where did the courage and the um, spark come from then to put that into an entrepreneurial uh, arena, if you will? Um, actually, a lot of it was to do with Ariel. Um, she, you know, we, we had been friends since actually kindergarten, me and her. We've known each other for many, many years. Um, we... There was times of falling out, falling back in, just life. Never, yes. we didn't have a, just, yes. just our life. Yeah. Um, and we rekindled it in the last few years. And, um, and then it just blew up. We didn't really know how we, well, we would connect and we just did. And um, seeing how much she's grown and how inspirational she is and how she lives her life and, and the things she has done with her business and how alike we are, I'm like, and I don't get bitter, I get better. So it's like a, mm. it's a, a positive envy. Like, okay, holy crap, look what she has. Look what she's accomplishing. accomplishing. Why, why can't I? I want to I wanna do that. I was like, what resources do I have? What do I know? What am I good at? Okay, teeth, oral care. I've been a part of that world for a long time. How can I turn this into a business, a passive income, um, but also be a positive impact on the world? Because that's important as well to me. Um, so that's where the seed kind of came from was just conversations with Ariel. And then one night my head was just buzzing with ideas. And then, um, I approached my closest friend, Amy, who's my business partner. She's also a hygienist with a lot of years of experience. Okay. And I brought it to her and from that, our heads kind of butted and then it just blew. And we just kept, and from that day, we just, we have been growing it since. And, um, we, can you share? Would you be willing to share your brilliant uh, little nugget? Absolutely, yeah. I, I, mean, I, don't wanna, okay. I don't wanna give away um, everything, but um, yeah, our company is Avo, Avo Everlasting Essentials. So um, everlasting meaning, you know, we're, we're, what we are giving to you is reusable for life, everlasting, you know, nothing's landfill associated. Um, and then essentials, essential for your oral oral care. We didn't want it to be dental because we didn't want to limit ourselves on what we can bring to the people. So our specialty is oral care. So we're going to start there and we're going to see where, where it grows into. Um, avo comes from avocado, um, a very trendy ingredient that people love their avocados, but also the health benefits, huge, huge health benefits with avocados. Um, and one being in the oral mouth actually. And so we're, we're bringing avocado oil into um, the toothpaste. Um, mm. The toothpaste is an all-natural toothpaste. Um, the The product itself is a dispensing product that is made of an ionized aluminum, so it's metal, so it's reusable. It's 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 essentially for life. Um, the toothbrushes um, are manual, but the whole piece of it is the same. Uh, it's cohesive, so it's a very high quality kind of luxury concept for your bathroom so that people, when they see it, it's not an eyesore, it's not plastic, it's not junky. It's, right. it's, it's something that they'll, they'll want to put in their bathroom. You know, they'll want to almost take pictures of it and throw on their Instagram. Like it, it'll look very, it's very mm -hmm. um, trendy and high, high quality. Um, but the toothbrushes match your unit. Um, again, reusable, washable. Um, and then the toothpaste tubes get inserted. Um, and that's all, um, you know, recyclable and yeah. you just, and, and it, we're making it very user-friendly, very clean. Um, and another thing that I had, didn't mention to you, James, that we're doing is, um, Amy has some, has some past as well, some trauma too. And, and with, with stuff. So, um, we're actually partnering with a foundation in mission that, um, uh, is about helping abusive women in, in homes that just need to leave and get out. So mm. a lot of what we're going to be attaching to what we're doing is proceeds going to helping women in abusive situations that just need an out. Mm -hmm. 
and that they take nothing but a handful of stuff with them. And, and there is, it's happening quite a bit. There is quite a bit of this going on, um, more so through COVID. Um, but people that require toothbrushes, deodorant, um, you know, women that need those, those just some of those daily Amazing. products, the basic daily products. So um, that's something that's really important to us as well, part of this. Um, another thing is the education. So when people buy a product, they will be getting also, we have planned pamphlets and on our social media things about um, personal education, not just copy and paste from Google, but real advice on oral mm -hmm. care and maintenance and just things about your mouth that maybe you never really heard of from your hygienist before. So bring, making it very realistic and yeah. relatable, you know, not just the textbook yeah. classic brush your teeth twice a day, floss, <laughs> and it's really good. You know, right. there's more, there's so much more to it. So yeah, we really want this to be revolutionary to the oral care world. We want to help the planet. We want to be natural Beautiful. and we also want to, and, and here, you know, our, our, our oral mouth, make that, make that our number one priority cool. is what we're doing. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll Perfect. make sure that we put some contact info, of course, in the, in the show notes. So people can go and find out more yeah. information. And Yeah. So at, like, like I said, as of now, we haven't launched the website um, or, or uh, pre-sales will be happening in a short bit, but um, yes. it's, um, yeah, we're still in, cool. in the works, but um, it's, it's coming. It's really, it's, you know, it's been a year in the pro process. There's a lot of behind the scenes and, um, we're you really perfecting it. You know, just a little sidebar, uh, future thought, just going to seed something here that uh, maybe yeah. we should get Amy on. And I'd love to just have a conversation with the two of you just in terms of, of support for women uh, in general and, and you know, uh, of different age ages. I, I, I'm very blessed to work with mostly women uh, and, mm -hmm. and my clients. And, and, and I do know that it is a, a common denominator for many of them uh, and uh, it's 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 in need for sure it's in need yeah there's a lot that do need help and they mm -hmm. don't know where to go mm -hmm. and don't know what to do yeah um so that that um i can definitely talk about talk to her and bringing her on and yeah be, yeah Jesus just you know let's you know something to think about down yeah. the road yeah. for sure yeah yeah um, to, to bring this all together again, I'd like to just tie it up with, yeah. um, if I may, Jessica, mm -hmm. what would you go, if you could go back in time and, and say anything to that 15, 16, 17 year old girl? <laughs> um, yeah. Keeping it, keeping it PG 13 right <laughs> <laughs> Slap her in the face. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you say? Well, what would you say to, you know? Um, you know what, though? It was, it would probably be something I already heard from everyone else. Um, there is so much more than what you see right now. Life yeah. can get so much better if you allow it. Um, change your negative, your negative your, your negativity is, is you're in manifesting inside and bringing yourself down. Start looking at the positive in people, the positive in life. And that will just, that will just domino into more and you will be happier. Um, you know, it was just finding that happiness and mm -hmm. then letting that grow. And it just, you know, um, but I, I feel like these kind of things I already knew and had, it was just more honestly growing up, getting maturing and going through a big, I need, just, I was that person that clearly needed that hard moment to really push me. Yeah. Um, you, know, you just said something that sparked in me. What was it? What did I say? <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, no I'm, I'm thinking in my, in my, my own journey and just in life, it's like, you know, we're, we're getting more evolved and we're, we're getting more conscious and, and, you know, we're, we're getting more aware of, people's feelings and emotions and bullying and this and that. And you just said, you know what? I just, I just needed to grow up. And, and I think a lot of times now we're so quick to label things and, and, and think that there's things that are wrong with people or, or whatever. And it's just like, I think it's, 
sometimes it's just part of being a kid, being a yeah. Fucking kid. Yeah. And 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 growing yeah. up. I know things yeah. are different than when I went to school and things are different than you were when you were yeah. that age. I get that, but growing up is still growing up. Yeah. And we have to remember that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's that? it's just sometimes that complicated, but that's simple. Like you just, you, and you know, you know, people throw that out, just grow up. And it's like, no, growing up, it, it changes you. I don't think that there's somebody that can honestly say when they were in their high school to their adult years, that they're the exact same person, you know, or had the exact same interests. I'm not no. the exact same person I was five years ago. And I'm in my middle age for God's sakes. Yeah. Right. So we're, Yeah. Right. And so I'm still growing up, you know, I think we'll always be growing up till, till, till we die. You know, we're always growing up, learning, changing. But if we can grow in the right direction, then then that can be something really beautiful. Um, it is. And and growing, just growing with that little Jesse mm-hmm. and the little Jimmy, as I like to say, like growing with them now in life, like bringing them along for the ride and 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 having fun and finding the joy and the wonder and all these things, yeah. you know, uh, life is a hell of a lot better uh, with an inner child next to you, as I like to say. Oh yeah. Never. You know, you never forget them, the, you, you know, know, our, our, who we were, where we came from. As yeah. JLo like to say, still Jenny from the block, you know, so. Jenny from the block, riding Jenny the sixth the train. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. we all have, and we all have a story and a journey and, I can really speak to the teenagers. Um, It would be let yourself, it's okay to grow up. It's okay to change, but really look at your, yourself and your life. Is this for the better? Am I go walking my day to day, helping others or am I destroying others? And is this the person who I want to be? And if I can honestly say that when you, there's not somebody that would disagree with me. If you can make somebody smile or make somebody happy or change somebody's day for the better, you will never feel bad about it. You will never feel bad about making somebody happy or making somebody smile. What did you say to me? What was never, never feel bad about doing the right thing, doing the right thing you will never feel bad about doing the right thing. So, um, but so I, I think that would be something that we can always live with and take with us through all of our years. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jess, thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you for, yeah. actually, you know, for, for being transparent and, yeah. and sharing stuff with us. Uh, you know, we, we do all have a story to tell. Mm-hmm. And uh, within that story uh, is also heroic greatness, each individual, how we, how, mm-hmm. how that lands for us and what we're called to do here. Uh you are an amazing woman with, uh, with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of life to live, to impact and to be of service. So yeah, keep it up. Mad love to the courageous, as I always say. Thanks James. And, I appreciate uh, it. Yeah. yeah. D- day by day, right? Step by day step. Day by day. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks again. And for all of you tuning in, thank you so much for your support and uh, for joining us on this conversation until next time. We'll see you later. Cheers. Thanks.